Hi, my name is Jess. I'm currently studying at the University of York, but today I'm going to be talking about my undergraduate dissertation project that I did with Dr. Richard Harris at the University of Leeds. Firstly, I just want to thank the EPS for presenting me with the Undergraduate Project Prize. It's a real honour to have received it and to be able to share my work today. So my project was looking at exploring the temporal dynamics of facial expressions. So first, just to provide a bit of context, Facial expressions are integral to social communication and interaction that happens on a daily basis. There are lots of different theories of facial expression recognition, but one of the most famous is Ekman's universality thesis. Now this suggests that there are six biologically basic emotional expressions that are recognized around the world. These include happiness, fear, disgust, surprise, sadness, and anger. Now, Eichmann suggested that these expressions have evolutionary origins in transmitting important information to the observer. This means that these expressions can be universally formed and recognised. This is possible because of the specific facial muscle movements, sometimes referred to as action units, that are used to form each of these expressions. Now, there's a lot of evidence that can be drawn upon to support this notion of universality. Some of this includes the high levels of recognition cross-culturally. So this is particularly in cultures that don't have any experience with Western culture, therefore suggesting the high levels of recognition accuracy for these expressions achievable in these cultures is due to an evolutionary component enabling their recognition. Evidence also comes from the subcortical brain regions that are used to process these expressions. This includes regions such as the amygdala, which is shown in this diagram in red. So these um, brain regions are shared with other species. This suggests that they um, process biologically relevant stimuli. Therefore, this indicates that these six expressions are biologically relevant. This also suggests that the recognition of these expressions cannot totally be accounted for by socio-cultural learning. Final piece of evidence comes from the similarities in the perceptual processing of these expressions across different cultures, again suggesting that there must be an evolutionary component that allows this similar perceptual processing. However, a lot of Ekman's research and the supporting evidence uses static images of facial expressions. This ignores the fact that expressions aren't inherently static, they're dynamic. They consist of different action units that have a different onset, apex and offset as the expression transitions from neutral to its peak point. This suggests that temporal information within expressions may reflect something inherent within expression representations. The nature of information that's transmitted across the time course of expressions was not captured in Ekman's original theory. So in an investigation of this, Jack Garrod and Shins in 2014 presented participants with 3D avatars of faces that were displaying random combinations of action units. So for example, in this figure here, participants were being displayed with action units 4, 5 and 20. They then asked participants um, to categorise these into one of the six expression categories. So as you can see, some of these action units are occurring earlier and some of them are occurring later. And they then determined the time point at which each action unit was consistently related to each emotion category. They found that there was the sequential unfolding of action units over time, suggesting that those that were occurring early were portraying biologically important information to the observer quickly. They suggested that early overlapping action units for disgust and anger and fear and surprise create confusions between these expressions early in dynamics. They suggested that this is because they have a shared evolutionary function. So, for example, disgust and anger can be used to indicate a stationary danger and fear and surprise an incoming danger. Therefore, in contrast to Ekman and the supporting research, they hypothesize that there's actually only four basic emotion categories at the start of expression dynamics. These include disgust slash anger, 
fear slash surprise, happiness and sadness. These could then um, become the six socially defined categories with the addition of more action units as the expression unfolds. Now this adds an element of nuance not captured in Ekman's original theory, that the expression signals that are being temporally conveyed may actually differ in their evolutionary origins. This also implies that a lack of investigation into the temporal components has limited our advancements in the understanding of the information portrayed by the dynamic unfolding of expression stimuli. Therefore, our study aimed to investigate the accuracy of facial expression categorization over the time course of temporally dynamic stimuli. Uh, to do this, we used uh, videos of actors that were displaying prototypical muscle movements that are associated with each expression. This just displays more characteristic components of action unit sequences that are related to each expression to more directly reflect typical expression processing. So we had two main hypotheses. Our first hypothesis was that accuracy would improve over the expression time course. Now this is because at the end of expression dynamics, the um, stimuli represent a static expression. So this would suggest that as all the available information has been portrayed, accuracy of categorization should be at its best. Our second hypothesis was in line with Jack, that at the start of expressions, there would only be four basic emotion categories. These would include disgust, anger, fear, surprise, happiness, and sadness. These would be indicated by the confusions that were being made between categories early in expression dynamics, and then they'd be able to um, become the six socially defined categories as the expression continues to develop. However, Jack and colleagues did not specifically define what the start of an expression is referring to. So we did a pilot study to determine um, what length of clip taken from the start of the expression videos could be used to represent the start of all of these expressions. So in order to do this, participants either viewed the first 50 milliseconds or the first 100 milliseconds of each of the six expressions um, using videos taken from the ADFES database. So participants were asked to classify these expression clips into one of the six expression categories using an alternate force choice test. So just um, displayed in this figure is the order of presentation. So participants were presented with the expression clip, then asked to make a response, then shown a fixation, and then another expression clip, and so on. So from our data, we calculated the percentage correct categorization accuracy for each of the expressions in both conditions. So what we were looking for was an accuracy rate of around 30%, just to match a similar study that Richard had done previously that was investigating the temporal dynamics of vocalizations of emotion. And so what we found was that participants were categorizing at this 30% accuracy rate, more in the 50 millisecond condition than in the 100 millisecond condition. We also calculated the um, percentage categorization accuracy for each actor's displays of each of the expression clips. And this just showed us that some of the actors were portraying the expressions with uh, and resulting in a 30% accuracy more than others. So these actors were chosen for inclusion in the main experiment. So now that we've defined the start of expressions as the first 50 milliseconds of the expression clips, we could investigate the categorization accuracy and the nature of confusions made at different time points. So in order to do this, participants either viewed the first 50 milliseconds or the full clip of each of the expression types. This was using five actors that were selected from the pilot study. And again, we just asked participants to, to classify these into one of the six expression categories using a force choice test. So firstly, from our data, we calculated the percentage correct identification. We then, we then did a two-way ANOVA with expression category and clip length. And what this revealed was that there was a significant main effect of both clip length and expression and also a significant interaction. So 
On this graph here, we've got percentage accuracy on the y-axis and the clip length on the x-axis. And so for the main effect of clip length and the exploration of the interaction, we found that all the expressions were being categorized significantly more accurately in the full clip condition than in the 50 millisecond condition. So the error bars here are just representing standard error. However, we found that this benefit of viewing the full clip was um, least seen for sadness and happiness. Uh, we also found that the main effect of expression was being confounded by the interaction between expression and clip length. So basically, this just meant that the, um, there was no expression that was being categorized significantly better or worse than all others across both conditions. However, this analysis didn't um, show us this, the sort of confusions and misidentifications that participants were making um, at different time points. So we calculated the percentage misidentifications of each of the expression categories as one of the non-target expressions. So we first take a look at 50 milliseconds. Um, so on the top here, we've just got each target expression and then going down the side, the selected expressions. So the diagonal in this table just represents the percentage correct categorization. And visual analysis of this confusion matrix showed us that whilst participants showed higher correct than incorrect categorization, they also showed some um, systematic confusions between anger, disgust, and sadness. They also showed higher incorrect than correct categorization of fear as surprise, followed by sadness, and then correct categorization as fear. We also found that surprise was being confused with sadness, and that happiness showed few confusions with any of the other expression categories. If we then take a look at the full clip condition, so we found that all expressions were more often correctly than incorrectly categorized, averaging an 83% accuracy and that um, each expression category was rarely confused with one of the other expressions, except for fear, which did still show some confusion with surprise. So just to summarize at this point, um, in our experiment, we aim to investigate the expression categorization over the time course of dynamic expression development. We found that there was higher accuracy for all of the expressions when viewing the full clip compared to the first 50 milliseconds, as we predicted. And we also found that there were systematic confusions between anger, disgust, and sadness, as well as confusions of fear or surprise, but not confusions of surprise as fear. So relating this back to Jack's um, predictions, we did find that there was potentially a sequential unfolding of action units over time, such that as more information is portrayed as the expression unfolds, that this allows for a higher level of categorization accuracy. This does, does suggest that studies that have ignored the temporal dynamics of facial expressions have also neglected the variability in information as an expression develops. The early systematic confusions that we observed do show some support for Jack's prediction that some expressions are more morphologically similar early in their dynamics than others. This also then suggests that the subsequent action units support the discrimination of these morphologically similar expressions into discrete emotion categories. When considering the reduced benefit of clip length for happiness and sadness, this supports Jack's theory that these two expressions contain more distinctive action units early in their dynamics than the other expressions. However, our study did not find support for the predicted confusion patterns between disgust and anger and fear and surprise early in dynamics. So if we take a look at the fear and surprise confusion relationship, it was predicted that fear and surprise would be confused with one another. However, what we found was that whilst fear was being confused with surprise, surprise wasn't being confused with fear. So there was a lack of these reciprocal confusions. This suggests that confusions can't simply be explained by overlapping muscle movements 
otherwise they would have occurred in both directions. This seems to indicate that there's a more complex relationship going on here. Now, although we didn't investigate um, the reason for this unidirectional relationship, there are some explanations for why it could have occurred. For example, there is the frequency of contact with which we see each expression in daily interactions. So previous studies that have asked participants to rate the frequency um, of contact with each expression category have found that fear is least frequently seen where a surprise is second most frequent. So this would suggest that when presented with fearful expressions, participants are more likely to categorize this as surprise just because they're more, um, more used to seeing this in daily interactions. Now, although this arguably could be taken to as evidence against the universality of these expressions, uh, previous studies have attributed this to a flexibility of an innate template of um, expression recognition. Therefore, this doesn't necessarily imply a lack of universality. Another possible explanation um, is related to the task demands. So surprise is quite ambiguous to participants as it can mean something positive or something negative. So this um, could have just led to an overgeneralization of surprise when presented with fearful expressions. So taken together, although it seems that um, fear and surprise are less discriminable early in their dynamics than the other expressions, taken from our results because of the lack of reciprocal confusions, it doesn't seem that fear and surprise can be said to represent a single combined basic emotion category based on what we found. So then if we take a look at the disgust and anger relationship, so it was predicted that disgust and anger would exclusively be confused with one another. However, what we found was that participants were making systematic confusions between disgust, anger and sadness. So this suggests that there's um, some shared component between all three expressions for confusions to be reciprocal and systematic. Importantly, sadness observes a different evolutionary function to anger and disgust. Uh, for example, it's been shown to be used to attract help from group members. This conflicts with the assumption that disgust and anger, when considered a combined basic emotion category, are used to signify stationary threat. So this suggests that the shared component for these expressions is not an evolutionary advantage. Instead, it could just be that these expressions have similar muscle movements early in their dynamics that are needed to create their peak endpoints. For example, they all contain similar eyebrow and mouth movements. When we consider the reduced effect for clip length, uh, the reduced benefit of viewing the full clip for sadness that we observed, this suggests that whilst it does have some distinctive movements early, it also shares some morphological components with anger and disgust. So taken together, anger, it seems that anger and disgust and fear and, surpri and surprise cannot be classified as combined discrete categories of biologically basic emotions early in dynamics. Therefore, our data suggests it's still possible that there are six biologically basic facial expressions of emotion, but these are determined by later distinctive facial movements. However, our results do seem to indicate that expression categories aren't as physiologically discrete early in their dynamics compared to when they're at their full intensity. Now, this is a concept that was originally overlooked by the basic emotion approach. And although early confusions don't seem to be biologically relevant, they don't fit with an entirely categorical account to facial expression processing. So categorical accounts suggest that there are different muscle movements associated with each expression that allows discrimination into discrete categories. This um, results in categorical boundaries between expressions such that when morphing between two expression categories, there's a point at which um, there's a shift in the expression seen, suggesting this is a discrete, not a continuous relationship. However, our results suggest that most of these unique movements are occurring later in the expression dynamics. 
Dimensional accounts, on the other hand, suggest that expressions lie on different dimensions and these potentially relate to valence and arousal. So each expression is then recognised based on their position within this multidimensional space. So, for example, happiness might occupy a different position to anger. Studies have then suggested that overlapping action units between expressions are indicative of these expressions sharing a dimension. This means that they fall close to each other within this multidimensional space and confusions can occur between them. Now, although it was previously thought that these um, accounts were conflicting and contradictory, hybrid accounts have recently been developed that suggest both types of processing can occur, such that categorical perception can occur within these dimensional assessments. Now, if we relate this back to our results and temporal dynamics, uh, it seems that categorical perception can't explain the pattern of results that we observed during the start of expression dynamics. Instead, it's possible that these findings can be accounted for by an early engagement of dimensional perception. So early ov um, overlapping action units potentially signifying shared dimensions are occurring at the start of these expression dynamics. So why would this dimensional processing be beneficial? Well, this could be because at the start of dynamics, there's not much information, and so the expressions are highly ambiguous. This would then lead to a heavier reliance on contextual information. And as dimensional processing results in a more flexible representation, the perceived expression could be modified based on the incoming information as the expressions continue to unfold. Drawing on hybrid accounts, this would then suggest that there's an increased dominance of categorical perception as the expression develops. So although studies haven't typically investigated um, categorical and dimensional perceptual co-occurrence in the temporal domain, <laughs> um, there is some evidence that can be drawn on to support this view. So for example, studies investigating hybrid accounts have found that there's an increased dominance of categorical processing for static stimuli, despite the presence of both categorical and dimensional processing. So as static stimuli resemble the end point of dynamic expressions, it makes sense that at this point in expression processing, categorical um, processing could have overtaken the dimensional processing that could be occurring earlier. Support also comes from um, viewing faces in context. So facial expressions are rarely viewed in isolation. They're surrounded by contextual information such as um, bodily expressions or vocalizations. So studies that have investigated the temporal dynamics of the presentation of expressions and vocalizations have found that the time point with which morphologically similar expressions can be discriminated occurs earlier when there's the, this bimodal presentation. This suggests that the presence of um, vocalizations are aiding the disambiguation between these similarly valenced expressions. This is plausible when considering the potential for the role of the posterior superior temporal sulcus in both audiovisual integration and dimensional processing. A final piece of evidence comes from a study done by Jack in 2016 using a similar methodology to their 2014 study. In this study, they were again investigating cross-cultural expression identification. And um, what they found was that there were four action unit configurations that were consistently seen across cultures. They suggested that these correspond to dimensions of valence, arousal and dominance. And they too hypothesized that this dimensional processing could occur at the start of expression dynamics. And they suggested that this is because there's a shared evolutionary communicative function. They then said that there would be the addition of culturally defined action units that would generate specific expressions. Now, although our results are almost complementary, they don't support this view because of the addition of sadness in the confusion relationship between anger and disgust and the different evolutionary function that this entails. 
Instead, our results seem to suggest that this potential early engagement of dimensional processing just relates to the ambiguity of the expressions and the need to use contextual information to have a flexible representation. Nonetheless, regardless of the explanation, this data does imply that there are less discrete emotion categories at the start of facial expressions. It is apparent that the basic emotion approach, whilst potentially able to account for the apex of these six proposed expressions, cannot sufficiently explain the entire time course of expression formation and recognition. It fails to acknowledge the influence of early decreases in the degree of discrete categorization and the similarities in musculature changes between certain expressions. So to conclude, we found that accuracy improves over the time course of expression development. However, the systematic confusions that we observed don't support the presence of only four biologically basic emotion categories early in dynamics. Our results do seem to suggest that categories aren't as discrete early in their temporal dynamics, something that hasn't been heavily investigated previously. And this could be because of potential difference in perceptual processing at different time points within an expression. So together, this leaves room for further investigation into what this means for the biological basis of emotion categories. A continued focus on the temporal dynamics including the influence of contextual information and the different models of perceptual processing at different, time, at different time points in expressions offers possible insight and future avenues for research. So I'd just like to say a quick thank you to Richard for all of his help with my project and to the other students that helped with collecting the data and of course to everyone that participated. Thank you for listening.